Thank you very much. As we just heard, my name is Adrian Schwent. I'm the head of NetLabs and this is BART. We will be talking about how open data can help fighting fighters, fires and for that I just give the word to BART. Okay, my name is uh, Bart van Leeuwen. I'm a firefighter at the uh, Amsterdam Fire Department. This is my day-to-day uh, -day job. That's actually me trying uh, to go inside the house which is uh, clearly on, uh, on fire. Um, this is, this is the, the, the workspace of my chief. It's a bit different than the, the, the various desks uh, government workers normally have. This is where my chief works. And when we go to, out to a fire, um, it's a shame that we don't have uh, uh, audio. This is basically what we see. And this is the environment we have to work in. And it doesn't look that special, but then suddenly this happens. And even in this environment, we still have to work. We still have to make decisions. We still have to think about all the information we gather and how we interact with that. But as you can see, um, it's quite shaky. And the noise you hear is actually 120 decibels. So try to communicate. I mean, normally when I do the presentation, it's over the speakers in the room and then you can't hear me anymore. But now I still win from the laptop, the laptop speakers. In this environment, we have to interact with various sources of information. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it was stressed out as well. A, a, radio, a digital radio system to talk with the dispatch, personal safety equipment, gas alerts, uh, portable radio systems, mobile telephones, status boxes, um, GPS navigation systems. And to, to stick with the last one, even though it sounds logical, this doesn't work for us. The problem with this system is that it's great for a tourist visiting Amsterdam, but it's not what we want as a firefighter because this doesn't tell, me, tell us where we needed to go. So, and obviously the voice, you can forget that. You can't hear the directions if you will have 120 decibels screaming over it. So what we decided to do is that, what, what do we actually want? We want to know where we need to go up front. So before we leave the station, before we enter this hectic situation of driving to the incident, we want to know where we want to go. So all this information of where the, the actual incident is was already out there in, in, in non really structured data. So what I set out is I scraped that information, created RDF out of that, and uh, pushed that to the systems I put on every fire station in Amsterdam, or I'm in the process of putting on every fire station. And that looks like this. So you can see there is the fire station where I'm located, and this is where the little incident is. And this is ex exactly what we wanted. We can see where, where we are, where the incident is, and we can plot the route. So the driver can decide which route he takes because he has local knowledge. He's not a tourist in Amsterdam, he knows the city. The second thing we are working on with the government of um, infrastructure is to plot roadworks. So if they're, they're constructing the street, they will plot that on this, on this map as well. Secondly, you can see that the information is really structured underneath here, so we know exactly what we're going out to. So what the incident is, where we have to communicate over, and what the location is. Um, this is all normally all just in, in, in one small screen that you saw in, in the fire truck, which is really not comfortable to work with if you're bouncing through the streets of Amsterdam. And still, if we talk about this, still my biggest fear is that um, at some point in time something really bad will happen to me or one of my colleagues. And at the end there will be an investigation. And the, the reason that it happened we already knew as an organization, because we know that inside our organization there is knowledge which we are not able yet to put in the operational service. So there's knowledge about, about locations in the city. So even that um, is something we still need, need to, to solve with that. So what you just showed us before was that we had a lot of different silos. We had information locked in various devices. And you just mentioned additional information. What would for you be the ideal form to look at the information? Would you like to have that all in one page, for example? Yeah, the, the, the problem is, you saw we have already eight devices in our fire truck. Uh, the ninth or the tenth will not help us because we only are four minutes in that truck. Uh, we talked to people from NASA and they said it's basically what we ask our astronauts to do. And we're not gay, we, are, we are not ast astronauts. So we have to think of a different way of how we interact with this information, where we get that and how we are we gonna, how we gonna show that. That's really a, 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 big, a big thing. And will this data be locked? Like, will it be static or will it move? No, well, the, big, the biggest problem is that we have, have uh, departments who, for example, do the permits on buildings. So is, is, is the building 
compliant to regulations, and sometimes even though a building complies to regulations, building regulations, it still can be a dangerous situation for us. And right now they do not have any opportunity to, to, to tell us, like, okay, we gave a permit to the building, but you have to be aware of certain situations inside that building, some special, uh, some special things. That is something we would like to know, and we have no means of getting that into, into the fire truck at, at this time. The other thing where we're having a department which does investigations of structural fires. So if they see that for some reason uh, a certain area of the city has a typical set of fires because of yeah, old regulations which didn't work, they know that. They know that from their report they can see that happening, but they have no way of telling us that right now. And that's where we work together with the university, the Free University in Amsterdam to help us scrape that information from our own departments, but also from other government departments. So what you showed us in this example is you said this is linked data, this yep. is RDF information. Yep. How do you want to select the information? Like, does this depend on the situation you're in or do you always want to have well, the same view on it? That's, that's, the, the, that's the, the, the tough question we have to, to ask ourselves is um, what information is important at what point in time? And secondly, if there is no information, is it then safe for us? Probably it's not safe at all because we don't know anything about the building. So if we know a lot about the structure, then probably it's a lot safer for us to, to operate here. So that's also something that the university or the free university will help us with to qualify the information we get from different departments. So in the keynote before, David just said that he really loves programmers basically because they do the magic. So can you work with programmers for doing stuff like that? Or what are the requirements you have for creating such an interface? Well, right now, this is really, uh, really tailor-made, but the problem we see with all the other interfaces which we have in the fire truck, they're just made for one cause. So we talk to a programmer and we say, hey, we have this piece of information, and he will probably make up an interface for that, just that one piece of information. But um, as we go on with the project and we start making some, some, some fuss about it, like I'm doing here, we see uh, other departments in the city of Amsterdam coming to us, like, hey, guys from the fire department, I mean, we are very popular, and people see our cause, you know, it's, we don't have to explain why we want this information. We have some information as well. Can we incorporate that? And if we have to talk to a programmer every time that this information appears, then we would have a problem. That's obviously where you guys from NetLab will come in. Exactly. So, as a programmer, we had to come to the conclusion that when we have linked information, which is by definition all the time moving, because we don't know what additional information we add to this cloud tomorrow, we need to have the flexibility of the information in the user interface as well. So the consumer, in this case Bart as a firefighter, needs to have the ability to adopt that to his need. And not just that, it also depends on the interface Bart wants to look at that. Right now, this is what he has in a fire station. Yep. It could be that in the fire itself he has some kind of a fireproof smartphone or <laughs> yeah. something like that. So he would need another view on the same information which has a far smaller display than the display at the fire Yeah, the things you see happening nowadays is that based on open information which is already out there, they're starting to create layer applications, which is really cool. So we have augmented reality, but they created just another silo with that specific information which layer can use. So we, you just added another silo, and that's not what we want, because we want to make that decision at the spot, and depending on the level of, of people. The interesting thing about this project is, and that's also one of the bigger messages, is just get started. Because I had a small problem as a, as a, as a government employee, I had a small problem, and okay, I can program a bit, so that helped, obviously. I created this solution because I had the problem, and now suddenly people start to understand what I tried to do. I first went to policymakers like, we, we want to do something different with, with the information we have. And it's like, yeah, you guys, you don't need that. You have a, a, uh, a navigation system which costs a considerable amount of money, so you probably have, just have to stick to that. So I just was stubborn, and I created this, and now everybody sees the light. So just getting started, and then the whole policy probably will come afterwards. And it's pretty interesting to see what happens when you do that. Uh, when Bart announced that the police and other fire yeah. departments contacted him, so just start doing it, you don't have to do much. And maybe just to mention our partners, NetLabs is creating the framework for looking at the information. NetH is implementing the specific course, and the Freie Universität of Amsterdam is actually helping in linked data research.
as a last slide. This is us. Yeah, this is us. If you want to talk to us, we are here for two days. You can also contact us by email if you're interested in exchanging ideas. Thank you very much. That was it.